The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles Chapter 14 The Impression of Increase Whether you change your vocation or not, your actions for the present must be those pertaining to the business in which you are now engaged. You can get into the business you want by making constructive use of the business you are already established in by doing your daily work in a certain way. And in so far as your business consists in dealing with other men, whether personally or by letter, the key thought of all your efforts must be to convey to their minds the impression of increase. Increase is what all men and all women are seeking. It is the urge of the formless intelligence within them, seeking further expression. The desire for increase is inherent in all nature. It is the fundamental impulse of the universe. All human activities are based on the desire for increase. People are seeking more food, more clothes, better shelter, more luxury, more beauty, more knowledge, more pleasure. Increase in something, more life. Everything living is under this necessity for continuous advancement. Where increase of life ceases, dissolution and death set in at once. Man instinctively knows this and hence he is forever seeking more. The normal desire for increased wealth is not an evil or a reprehensible thing. It is simply the desire for more abundant life. It is aspiration. And because it is the deepest instinct of their natures, all men and women are attracted to him who can give them more of the means of life. In following the certain way as described in the foregoing pages, you are getting continuous increase for yourself, and you are giving it to all with whom you deal. You are a creative center, from which increase is given off to all. Be sure of this, and convey assurance of the fact to every man, woman, and child with whom you come in contact. No matter how small the transaction, even if it be only the selling of a stick of candy to a little child, put into it the thought of increase, and make sure that the customer is impressed with the thought. Convey the impression of advancement with everything you do, so that all people shall receive the impression that you are in an advancing mind, you're an advancing man, and that you have advanced all who deal with you, even to the people who you meet in a social way, without any thought of business and to whom you do not try to sell anything. Give the thought of increase. You can convey this impression by holding the unshakable faith that you yourself are in the way of increase and by letting this faith inspire, fill, and permeate every action. Do everything that you do in the firm conviction that you are an advancing personality and that you are giving advancement to everybody. Feel that you are getting rich and that in so doing you are making others rich and conferring benefits on all. Do not boast or brag of your success or talk about it unnecessarily. Truth faith is never boastful. Wherever you find a boastful person, you find one who is secretly doubtful and afraid. Simply feel the faith and let it work out in every transaction. Let every act and tone and look express the quiet assurance that you are getting rich that you are already rich. Words would not be necessary to communicate this feeling to others. They will feel the sense of increase when in your presence and will be attracted to you again. You must so impress others that they will feel that in associating with you, they will get increase for themselves. See that you give them a use value greater than the cash value you are taking from them. Take an honest pride in doing this, and let everybody know it, and you will have no lack of customers. People will go where they are given increase and the supreme, which desires increase in all and which knows all, will move forward, you men and women who have never heard of you. Your business will increase rapidly and you will be surprised at the unexpected benefits which will come to you. You will be able from day to day to make larger combinations, 
secure greater advantages and to go on into a more congenial vocation if you desire to do so. But doing things all this, you must never lose sight of your vision of what you want or your faith and purpose to get what you want. Let me here give you another word of caution in regard to motives. Beware of the insidious temptation to seek for power over other men. Nothing is so pleasant to the uninformed or partially developed mind as the exercise of power or domination over others. The desire to rule for selfish gratification has been the curse of the world. For countless ages, kings and lords have drenched the earth with blood in their battles to extend their dominions. This not to seek more life for all, but to get more power for themselves. Today the main motive in the business and industrial world is the same, and men marshal their armies of dollars and lay waste the lives and hearts of millions in the same mad scramble for power over others. Commercial kings, like political kings, are inspired by the lust for power. Look out for the temptation to seek for authority, to become a master, to be considered as one who is above the common herd, to impress others by lavish display, and so on. The mind that seeks for mastery over others is the competitive mind, and the competitive mind is not the creative mind. In order to master your environment and your destiny, it is not at all necessary that you should rule over your fellow men, and indeed, when you fall into the world's struggle for the high places, you begin to be conquered by fate and environment, and your getting rich becomes a matter of chance and speculation. Beware of the competitive mind. No better statement of the principle of creative action can be formulated than the favorite declaration of the late golden rules, Joan of Toledo. What I want for myself, I want for everybody.